This may be your apology language if you want someone to take ownership of the hurt they caused. You want someone to clearly state what they did wrong to prove they can learn from the mistake. You don't want to hear excuses. Ding, ding, Ooh. ding, ding, ding. He hates oh, that. I'm guilty, I'm guilty. Woo, I hate an excuse. <laughs> Joshua Easy here once again with another quality video. So today we're doing something special. In the last video, we told you guys about how sincere apologies and genuine forgiveness are a key point to having a strong foundational relationship. Today we're going deeper into apologizing, mm -hmm. more specifically into apology languages. languages. We've always done love languages. That seems to be a very hot topic. Yeah, everyone, it's trendy, it's trendy. Everyone loves talking about love languages, but yes. we should also talk about the counter of that, which is apology languages. Which we found out about actually in our premarital counseling sessions last year. What we came to realize is that we receive apologies very different and we'll talk, touch on that too as we go into the different categories so there's actually five apology languages and we're gonna go over those with you guys today now if you want to learn your specific apology language you can take the quiz for yourself we'll leave a link down in the description box below so without further ado let's go ahead and hop into this video first apology language expressing, expressing regret, regret. So in this one, it's almost as simple as saying, I'm sorry, but you want to empathize with the person and show that you actually acknowledge their feelings and the pain that you've caused. Yes, oftentimes people allow pride or ego, guilty. Okay, I gotta be real, because that was an issue of some of you guys have been on this journey with us for a long time. So within some of our videos, we talked about like our toxic traits and stuff over the years. One of mine was apologizing. Would not come out of my mouth. Even if I felt it, the pride and the ego, and I'm like, no, nah, yeah. don't do it, until he pulled the card of like, if you cannot learn how to do this, I cannot be with you. Actually, now that you bring that up, over the years, it's developed past just expressing regret. Yeah. We'll get into the later apology language. That's my personal apology yes. language. If you're in the expressing regret category, mm -hmm. something that would probably appeal to you is someone saying, I'm sorry, I didn't realize the pain or trauma that that would have caused you. Mm -hmm. And now seeing you in this state makes me realize I'm wrong. That I'm very wrong. Yeah, and I apologize. And for I that. apologize for that. Mm -hmm. That's a good expressing regret apology. So we have some notes just to help you guys out even more with this. But if you are a person whose apology language is expressing regret, this will probably apply to you. If you want someone to acknowledge the hurt that they've caused you, if you want someone to genuinely express that they regret their actions, and then you want to feel validated in your emotions. If any of those apply to you, then you probably want someone to express regret. Apology language number two. two. Accepting responsibility. responsibility. That's a big one. That is a really good one. I'll let you head honcho. Accepting responsibility is my apology language. In this case or scenario, you want the person to acknowledge their wrong. It's not necessarily about them validating your feelings. It's more so of them acknowledging the fact that they committed a wrong. And what was the wrong specifically? Yes. I'm sorry sorry is not good enough for this apology language. Mm -mm. I like that because then that lets me know you've acknowledged what the problem was. So if we circle back to this, mm -hmm. then there's no gray area on what you apologize for. So you admitted you were wrong the last time and we can use that as a reference point for whatever occasion comes up in the future. Right, because ignorance is bliss. Yes. It's like when you know better, you're supposed to do better. Uh -huh. I think which is also why you like to hear the for what are yes. you sorry for exactly. I was gonna say a real life scenario, being on time, if we're saying we have a date night or something, and I say I'm gonna be dressed by a certain time, but usually it's like a half an hour or so after that, you hate that shit. I really hate it. And you know what's crazy is more often than not, I get, I'm sorry. Yeah. I express what? You express regret. I express regret. But you don't acknowledge that the problem. I don't accept responsibility. Yeah, not being on time. Yeah. It really helps add clarity to the situation. Mm -hmm. If you just said, I'm sorry, I can't reference that point. Mm -hmm. I can't say like, you did this before and you're like, when? Well, you apologized and said for this. Right. And I also, building off the point, I'm gonna hit this one home. Oh baby. man. Hit this one home. You can't change a problem that you don't know exists. Mm. I love when you acknowledge your problem because then that means there needs to be an active solution for the problem. Mm -hmm. Saying I'm sorry could mean that this was just a one-off, but saying what you're sorry for acknowledges what the problem was. Let's create an action plan to, to avoid it. To future. avoid that. So again, got notes. This may be your apology language if you want someone to take ownership of the hurt they caused. Boom. Ding, ding, ding. You want someone to clearly state what they did wrong to prove they can learn from the mistake. Boom. Ding, ding, ding. Number three, you don't want to hear excuses. Ding, ding, Ooh. ding, ding, ding. He hates oh, that. I, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. Woo, I hate an excuse. <laughs> Ooh, cause 
there's always gonna be an excuse for an action yeah. every single time. Yeah. But yeah, that I know that's my apology language. Every single one just hits home for me every time. So those are a few things. If you have the accepting responsibility apology language, that's more than likely yours. Number three, making restitution. Restitution is fixing the wrong. If I broke a glass, right. I replace the glass. Correct. Mm -hmm. There's an action that replaces the damage done. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, let's say, somebody cheated on someone. And then making restitution, that's not as easy as you can't buy. Yeah, you can't you buy know. back that moment. What is a good example of making restitution with that? The person who wants restitution wants the person who did the offense to come to them and say, How can I make this better? Mm -hmm. How can I make right my wrong? Right, yes. The ball is officially in their court. It kind of gives power back to the person who was offended or hurt. Mm -hmm. I hurt you. I know I hurt you. I'm really sorry about that. What can I do to make it up to you? Mm -hmm. That's a good apology for anyone who's looking for restitution. Mm -hmm. You may belong to this apology language if the following resonates. You want someone to prove they're willing to correct the problem, i.e. put their money where their mouth is. You find it important that the perpetrator makes things right again, whatever that might look like. And then lastly, you want someone to take the lead in the situation, mm -hmm. i.e. like you're going to take that initiative and say, hey, I'm going to make this right, but what is it that you need me to do to make mm -hmm. this right? Number four, genuinely repenting. Repentance. repentance, it's actually biblical too. This is kind of like a whole full cycle moment, but when you repent for something, there's a change of behavior. That's supposed to happen. That's supposed right. to happen. If you genuinely are repenting yes. for something, you want to change said behavior so yes. it does not happen again. This so, one is mine, by the way. This is definitely hers. Yes, I don't want just a sorry, I want your behavior to change. Don't tell me sorry, but you keep on doing the same thing on and yeah. on and on again. That, Gets under my skin. I would say this is probably my number two because along with accepting responsibility and saying what you did wrong, mm -hmm. I would love a change of behavior mm -hmm. to prove that you actually meant what you said. Mm -hmm. actually, it's easy. The words. Yeah, the words, the are, words so are so easy. easy. To get wiggle in and out. The actions. Really love a good action. Most. So I don't know. It might be tied for my apology language. You can't have both. I think I can. You score. <laughs> <laughs> we make our own rules. Mine is for freaking whatever. <laughs> But anyways, if you're going to repent, then yes, you have to show a change of behavior. And again, this is some biblical stuff, y'all. When y'all repent to the Lord about your sins, he wants to see a change in behavior too. Mm -hmm. So just know that when you repent, it's not just a matter of accepting or acknowledging that you did something wrong. What behaviors are you changing? to make the situation never happen again. Correct. Something else that would probably be beneficial is don't make excuses. Mm -hmm. Make a game plan. Mm -hmm. In the case that we were talking about in the last one about infidelity, repentance in this case would be like, I'm giving you the password to my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm being open and transparent. My sharing, phone, location, sharing location. Really anything that will make that person feel comfortable. I think with all of these apology languages, it would be good to ask your partner, like, what can I do to make this better? Yes. I think it's also important to know exactly what you're repenting for. And the only way for you to fully understand what you're repenting for is to talk to your partner about what hurt. Mm -hmm. Not just assuming, like, if it's an infidelity thing, oh, it was just the cheating. It might not have just been the cheating. It might have been, like, the distance, the emotional, the lack of emotional intimacy that, like, built into that. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So it's important to have those conversations. Well. Yeah. If this is your apology language, these statements will probably apply to you. You need proof that someone is growing and working towards changing their behavior. Ding, ding, ding. Proof. proof. Number two. You need assurance that you won't be let down the next time around. Facts. And number three. Words, words aren't, aren't enough, enough for you. If words aren't enough for you, then you definitely are looking for repentance out yeah. of that person. Yeah. We got one more left for you guys. Number five. Requesting, requesting forgiveness. forgiveness. For this specific apology language, the person wants to have the power put back in their hands. Mm -hmm. So if you created a problem or you did something, if I did something to offend mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. then I would say, can you forgive me? Mm -hmm. That is a transfer of power. So now the ball is officially in her court mm -hmm. to accept or deny forgiveness. Yeah. That can take time. Some yes. people need more time to forgive. Just because someone requests your forgiveness does not mean you need nah, to I mean, accept it. Like, give it to them, yeah. Because sometimes you might need proof. Sometimes you might need some repentance mm -hmm. to say like, well, I haven't seen a change of change behavior. behavior. You yes. haven't replaced the thing that you've broken. Right. You haven't expressed your regret. Like you haven't shown me anything to say that I need to forgive you right now. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people just like the thought of like saying, can you forgive me? All right, thank you yeah, for giving me that power. Yeah, yeah I can mm -hmm. forgive you. 
But if you don't say like, can you forgive me? Then it's like, well, you're not even looking for forgiveness. With this apology language too, it allows the other person, the hurt party, time to process that hurt. Sometimes apologies are different things that happen in a relationship. It's almost like this expectation that it'll be a quick turnover type of thing, which is not always fair, especially depending on the scenario and the depth of the hurt that was caused. This apology language allows that person to process it in their own time, in their own way. Ball is in their court. Mm -hmm. So this might be your apology language if you're not ready for reconciliation yet. Mm -hmm. So maybe you need more time. Okay, cool. Give me some time. I'll let you know when I forgive you. This may also be your apology language if you need more from the apology and want the space to ask for it. Last but not least, you need to know the person apologizing is willing to wait until you're ready. Dang, that's a big one actually. Yeah. This is sort of like me transferring the pain that you put on me back. You don't get my forgiveness right automatically. Yes. You gotta feel the kind of hurt that you put on me. Mm -hmm. So and they're not even gonna directly feel that hurt, but the distance. Yeah. Like the hurt that you caused has created distance, distance. and a void in between what we had mm -hmm. before the offense. Yeah, because sometimes people need that reminder. Mm -hmm. But with all these five apology languages, mm -hmm. sometimes it's necessary to mix and match them. Now you can know which one is the heavy hitter for you, because like I know personally mine is uh accepting responsibility. The quiz will tell you, I think, the order. Yeah. Based on the percentage of the scores, you can kind of tell how you should lead an apology with the person like mm -hmm. if someone's number one apology language is repentance but their number two apology is like asking for forgiveness then you know okay well I need to change behavior and then I also need to ask them to forgive me mm -hmm. so that way you know like how can I make this apology seem the most genuine to that person because mm -hmm. when you're apologizing it's not for you it's for them mm -hmm. you've caused a problem you've caused some hurt so now you have to figure out how can I get through to you mm -hmm. that I'm genuinely sorry for what happened in that moment and again this is why Sincere apologies and genuine, genuine forgiveness, forgiveness are so important and people can feel sincerity even in body language That's mm -hmm. why regardless of what apology language is yours It is important when you're offering it to someone or when you're receiving it that you are reading the room And it's actually really important for you to come from a genuine place because if you're yeah. not truly really sorry Then what are you apologizing for anyways other than the fact that you're sorry you got caught? Or yeah, you're not really regretting anything that you do that that's also a time for introspection mm -hmm. make sure that that when you are apologizing, you're coming from a place of sincerity. Yeah. And like maybe even a place of regret in your own heart. Yes. Because that's what's going to fuel the, the change behavior. The change behavior in the because future. you're looking out for your partner. And again, read the room. You can tell when somebody's being sincere or not. If you're kind of getting the shoulder shrug, sorry, or you know, the fluff, the words, and there's again no change behavior in the actions. This is something to pay attention to in the sense where you might be in a toxic relationship, toxic or unhealthy relationship. It's always nice to talk about the love languages and appeal to their love languages, but we also need to talk about the counter side. And when things go wrong, how do we have an action plan for when things go wrong? Correct, because things will go wrong. No relationship is perfect. No people in the relationship are perfect. So there will be hella apologies to have over the years when you're with somebody for long term. But I think the best way to maintain a healthy equilibrium in a relationship is to figure out you guys' apology languages because you'll be having a lot of them. That is all we have for this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed. Let us know if you want more videos like this. Also, come back and comment after you take the apology language quiz what your results were. I'll be really interested to see what people's results were on Yeah, that. and this is not just for relationships. This is yes. also for interpersonal relationships. Maybe with your parents, your friends, brothers, yeah, yes. like whatever. 100%. Everyone needs to know how to approach you with an apology. Mm -hmm. So you teach people you how to teach treat You teach people how to treat you. That's exactly what I was going to say. But yeah, if you don't already know, I'm Josh. She's EC, together we are Josh and EC. Now you can follow one of us. You can follow two of us. Or you can follow all three of us. You might as well follow all three of us because we are happy, healthy, and hydrated on all three. But other than that, y'all, until we meet again, peace, love, have grease, and we out.